Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Welcome to our worship. Indeed, God is good all the time. We are here once again, gathered together to worship God in spirit and in truth. And indeed, we are happy because we believe that God's blessings will be upon us today as we hear His word. For the announcements, I think uh, it will be shown in our slides. So, uh, and uh, for our church announcement, by the way, for those who doesn't know me yet, I'm the pastor of the Filipino Church, Filipino Presbyterian Church, and uh, we are having our worship at 1.30 here in the sanctuary. So, thank you. Thank you, uh, HBC, the Henderson Presbyterian Church, for welcoming us and adopting us <laughs> to use your facility. Thank you so much. And uh, as an announcement, in our church, beginning today, we changed our church name. From First Filipino American Presbyterian Church of Southern Nevada, we are now Presbyterian Church of the Living God. That's our new name, Presbyterian Church of the Living God. And we hope that with the change of the name, we can reach out to more people, diverse group of people, not just the Filipinos, but everyone that we can meet. We can bring Christ and the good news to them. Okay, with that. Any other announcements? Sorry, I wasn't aware if everybody could hear me. Any other announcements? With that, please stand for our call to worship. In times of trouble and distress, God is always present with us. When we call out, God hears us. The Lord will help those who seek God. God will answer the prayers of the people. And the righteousness of God. Let us worship, worship God, God who is faithful, faithful who is merciful, and just. and just. Please bow your heads for the opening prayer. Incarnate God, you are the one who comes to us in Jesus Christ. Holy One, you are the one who comes to us in the Holy Spirit. Sovereign of earth and heaven, you are the one who calls us to recognize you today and every day as the splendid, mighty God. Gather our hearts and minds this day. Kindle our God consciousness. Let us worship you in awe and wonder. Amen. Now please join in praise song number 29, Glorify Thy Name.
may receive it. Please join me in singing, Jesus loves me for his verse only, in preparation for the children's hymn. And you know what? In our lesson today, God is always good to us. He always seeks us because of His love. Even if we hide, we cannot hide from Him because we all know God is all seeing. He can see us. Maybe children hide because they have done something not good. <laughs> they broke maybe something. <laughs> Or, you're right, maybe you're hiding because you don't want to do any house chores, home chores. But then with God, He always seeks us. His love always finds us. And because of that love, we are here today, celebrating this wonderful worship because of His love and the sacrifice of His Son, our dear Lord Jesus. And so with that, even if we hide, we know that God is always there for us. His love will reach us and will embrace us. Okay? So even if you are good in hiding, don't worry. God will find you. And God will always be there to support and help you. Okay? So with that, let's have a short prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that uh, indeed, O oh God, you are a God of love, a God that always seeks us. In spite of us hiding from you because maybe we have done some wrong things, but still you are there for us. Thank you for your love. And may the children, O oh God, embrace that in their minds and hearts so that they will grow in your love. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. And now we will go to the uh, part that uh, we love most because we can share what we have and we can give what uh, God has given us. We can give in return to God. We now go to the giving of the tithes and offerings. 
Do we have, I'm sorry, do, do we have first the sharing? Oh, I see. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> sorry, I don't know the what you're doing here. Okay, so uh, thank you for those who want to, uh, who have given their tithes and offering. Indeed, God will always give us and we cannot outgive God. Definitely. No. And God said in His Word, it is always right to give to Him. And when we give, we give with a cheerful heart. Amen? Amen. in service to others. With the energy bestowed by the Spirit, we seek to inflame all your people with a seal for your way. Receive the work we do and the gifts we bring, that they may become a blessing in your sight. In your Son's name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Again, let us uh, close our eyes as we leave our prayers to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we live with the results of our sin and brokenness every hour. Violence, abuse, disease, poverty, hatred, and fractured relationships litter our world. Some people suffer loneliness and isolation, dislocation and hunger, depression, or even addiction. Still others are plagued with regrets, failures, anger, or fear. Amazingly, we cling to our familiar patterns even though they cause us pain and hurt the ones we love. We are enslaved to old attitudes and the old ways of thinking and acting. And we don't even recognize the destructive master we serve. But you offer another way, O oh Lord. Your grace is a gift that sets us free to be changed into the new creators you call us to be. Set us free. Liberate us from all that keeps us trapped and bound. For in you alone we will find freedom to be all you created us to be. I ask 
that you will bring peace to our lives today. Not a peace that removes our pain, but a peace that reminds us that you love us and are with us in our pain. Allow us to know that we are never outside your care. We trust you as our Father, and we thank you for always watching over us, your children. Oh God, thank you so much for all your love and care. This we pray in the name of your only Son, Jesus, who taught us that when we pray, we pray, all of us, please, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
This week we are going to start with the New Testament reading. And that was just a cue so that call the right one up because it's written in the wrong order. But, but um, Father, please bless this reading of your word. Mark 20 through 35. crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went up to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebub, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called to them and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and brothers came and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. The crowd was sitting around him and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. And now for the Old Testament lesson. You can find it in Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 15. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and thus you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the women, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. May we all be blessed by the reading of God's word. Praise be to God. Again, good morning to all. Yeah, we always say in our church, God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, after being restricted for more than a year, the church, actually we started to open the church last Sunday, and our hearts are grateful to God. We believe that God has been with us in that long, uncertain period and finally, we are here gathered 
in the sanctuary as one Binyaki family celebrating the victory of overcoming the restrictive effects of the pandemic. I thank Pastor Lee, the session, and all of you, the members of HPC, in allowing me to again lead the worship service this morning. But most of all, I thank God for giving me this opportunity to share His Word to you. Indeed, my dear brothers and sisters, God is good all the time. Shall we bow our heads again and pray? Heavenly Father, we are here to open our hearts and our whole selves to you. We thank you for the time and opportunity you have given us to worship you in this place and fellowship with our fellow believers. Holy Spirit, be with us to guide and lead us in understanding the lessons from your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I like to begin with a question that came into my mind when I was reading the scriptural text for this morning and preparing the message. And the question is, what might be the first game invented by man? Yeah. Well, if we look into the text of this story, it points to the game of hide and seek. The first game man invented was hide and seek. But sadly, it came with a great cost for all of us, for humankind. For it was when man fell into sin. And the story we all know about was the story of Adam and Eve. After eating the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil, Adam and Eve hid from God because malice came into their mind and see themselves as naked. God was seeking them at that time, and maybe they had that feeling of being ashamed and that guilt or fear, so they hide. I assume, my dear brothers and sisters, all of us have played this game, hide and seek. But I, as I told uh, uh, Nathan uh, earlier today, I don't know with the kids because they are all in virtual world right now. Just like my son, day and night, <laughs> he's in front of the computer playing with the others, not physically but virtually. In the Philippines, we call this game as the Taguan. Uh, we pronounce it Taguan. The root word is Tago. Tago means hide. So in the Philippines, we call this game Taguan. I don't know here in the U.S. if you have a, a unique name for hide and seek or just hide and seek. Hide and seek, yeah. Hide and seek. And so the question, is that the kind of life we live today in this world? Are we also sometimes hiding from God? And, though, and so what lessons and truths can we learn from our story today? Why do we hide from God? Because we committed mistakes. So in verse 8 of our text, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Yes, we hide because we know that God is always there, and we have that feeling of guilt. But we also know the reality, we cannot hide from God. God is everywhere, and He is an all-seeing God. But man has the tendency to fall into doing wrong things when no one is seeing him. Or, let's uh, rephrase it, man has the tendency to fall in doing wrong things when who knows him sees him. Because when somebody is, who knows you, sees you, you will do the right thing. But when there is no one that knows you, you proceed with doing what is not right. That is why, I don't know, uh, we have a saying here in Vegas, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. But I believe they changed it already last year, last February, 
to what happens here only happens here. <laughs> and so, my dear brothers and sisters, let us remember God is everywhere and we cannot hide from God. But the good news is, as I've said in the children's time, God always seeks us. So in verse 9 of our text, But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? God is always there for us, looking, seeking us. His promise of never forsaking or leaving us was already demonstrated at the beginning of mankind. And our story testified to the truth. God seeking us is also seen in Jesus' word when he told the story about the missing one sheep from the herd of 100. Remember that story in Matthew chapter 18, verses 12 to 14? What do you think if a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray? Does he not leave the 99 on the mountains and go search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly, I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, we have established that God is always seeking us. But the problem is with us. We hide from God. In verse 10 of our text, he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Adam speaking. Yes, man hid from God because he was afraid, knowing deep in his heart and mind that he committed a mistake. Isn't it the natural tendency of man to hide when we make a mistake and we feel guilty? I have that kind of experience back in the Philippines in my third grade. During that time, the popular game to us is that we have uh, an asbestos ring about uh, something like that, about uh, one inch in uh, the circular diameter uh, is one inch. And then we have a uh, a stick, and at the end of, us, of the stick, we put uh, a tin can so that it will uh, fit the asbestos ring as we roll it in the streets. That's the kind of creativeness we have during that time in my yeah, younger years, okay? But then, at that time, we were looking for that asbestos uh, circular ring that we can use because we don't have one. And so my friends and I, we went to our school because we know that it is being used as a fence or outliner to the plants beside the, the, uh, the building of the school. No? So at that time, since uh, I think we are about 10, 10 uh, children, so we got at least one or two. And they, the caretaker of the school have seen us and called the police. <laughs> yeah, they called the police because at that moment, at that time, it's just, for us, it's just fun. And we never thought that we're actually stealing school property. <laughs> we never thought of that. It's just for fun because we want to enjoy that game. And so, in less than 10 minutes, the police came and they ran after us, the 10 of us. Yeah, I don't know, but maybe because of adrenaline and fear in me, I was able to jump over uh, the school fence, which is twice as high as me. I don't know what happened, but I was able to leap over to the other side. And uh, the other side, a rice fields. And so I ran through that rice fields and straight, I go to our house. Of the 10, two were caught. I was one of the eight who escaped, <laughs> was able to escape. I hid in one of the rooms of our house. And every time I hear someone opening the gate, our gate, I fear that it will, it will either be the police or the school authorities that will summon or arrest me. I was afraid and I hid 
Because I know I committed a mistake. My dear brothers and sisters, then and today, how, do, how did we or how did man react or respond to the mistakes committed? I think most of the times, man justify our mistakes. So in verse 11 of our text, he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? So in our story, it pointed out to Adam and Eve, not God pointed out to Adam and Eve the mistake they did by asking them the question, if they ate the fruit of the tree God has forbidden them to eat. Adam and Eve were caught flat-footed because it's only by not obeying God's command that they will be able to know that they were naked. Instead of Adam and Eve asking forgiveness from God, what did they do? They point to others to justify the wrong things they did. So we can read that in verses 12 to 13. The man said, the woman whom you gave to me to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, no, not me, the serpent tricked me and I ate. My dear brothers and sisters, we succumb to temptations and trials, but point to others as the culprit and not us. It's not me, it's him, it's her. Oh, it's the snake. If, if, uh, I, if the snake knows how to point, maybe the snake will also point to someone else. <laughs> it's good that uh, the snake doesn't know how to point. <laughs> We all know, my dear brothers and sisters, that we are not perfect and many times we commit mistakes that displeases God. But sometimes instead of asking, you know, outright asking for forgiveness and we do repentance, we somehow find ways to justify what we have done. This is especially true if we thought that what we did is right. Have you had that experience of thinking that what you did is right and it doesn't necessitate uh, asking forgiveness or repentance? I will give you two examples, one in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament to drive my point. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, King Saul, instead of obeying God's command in destroying the entire Amalekites, had kept King Agag alive and the best of the sheep, not the best of the sheep and cattle to be used as sacrificial offerings to God. You see there, it seems right because King Saul has a very good intention and purpose. But the truth is, he disobeyed God. He disobeyed the command of God. King Saul tried to justify his disobedience to God. Another story is in Luke chapter 10, verses 13 to 42. When Jesus went to the house of Martha and Mary, remember that story? Martha was so busy in doing lots of works and all the house chores and even complained to Jesus that Mary was not helping her. It was because, what is Mary doing at that time? She was just listening to the words of Jesus. But Jesus pointed out to Martha that Mary has chosen the better part. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, we might justify that involving ourselves in God's work, maybe even not going to church or attending other church activities like Bible studies, because we are busy. Busy with our work, busy with our home chores and busy with all other things which we said are necessary and needed. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus didn't say to Martha that her work is not necessary. He didn't say that. But in a subtle way, Jesus rebuked Martha by saying, Mary has chosen the better part. 
Like King Saul and Martha, we tend to justify our mistakes. But still, God's love always seeks and cares for us. We hide from God out of fear and guilt, but His abundant grace and love seeks and finds us and has rescued us from forever being away from God. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, it was God who rescued us. Our hard-headedness and disobedience were responded by God with what? With love. So we are rescued by God. In verses 14 to 15, the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this curse, are you among all animals and among all wild creatures? Upon your belly you shall go, and thus you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. You will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. God's love always looks after our, our well-being, despite our mistakes and inconsistencies. We are in this world, therefore temptations and trials will always be there as a challenge. But God has given us the wisdom to know what's right from wrong, as he put enmity between humankind and the devil. But one thing is sure. Yes, we all know God loves us so much. But we cannot escape the consequence of the wrong things we did. That is why at this early, well, in the story of humankind, God already hinted his plan for our salvation. It is because of his great love, his abundant grace and compassionate mercy that he gave his only son Jesus to die for us and to offer us a way back to him and to God's kingdom. We all know John 3.16. They said John 3.16 is the key to the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. My dear brothers and sisters, the problem we created and which we cannot solve by ourselves, it was God who gave us the solution. Not us, but God. God authored and implemented the great plan of salvation to all mankind by the giving and the sacrifice of His only Son, our dear Lord Jesus Christ. And God manifests manifested his love for us when we were yet sinners not when we become good and obedient but when we were still bad or disobedient to God God devised the plan to save us all because of his love and so my dear brothers and sisters today in ending Hide and seek happen because we committed mistakes and we even justify our mistakes. But our loving God rescued us from death to having life and life eternal. There is no hiding if we commit mistakes and the best way out is to ask forgiveness. It is better to own up our mistakes and repent instead of justifying it. For God is always ready to hear us, to forgive us, and to give us all the chances for us to return back to Him. My dear brothers and sisters, from now on, let us not play hide and seek with God, but let us fully open ourselves completely surrender to His will. It is only by emptying ourselves and letting Jesus be the Lord and Master of our lives that we can fully experience His amazing grace in our lives. Let us then fully submit to God for we can only be victorious in Christ. Indeed, my dear brothers and sisters, God is good all the time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from east, from west, from north and south, and sit at the table that the Lord has prepared for us. This is the Lord's table. This is not just the table of HPC. And our Savior invites all those who believe in Him and who trust in Him to share this feast which he has prepared. All Christians who are repentant of their sins and who rely on the saving power of our Lord Jesus Christ are invited in this table. Let us pray. We come with thanksgiving and offer our gratitude for the blessings of this day, especially for the meal which you have prepared for us. As we feast together, loving God, let us bring to your table the troubles which weigh us down and prevent us from being fully present to the wonders of this day. Let us bring to your table the problems which perplex us and prevent us from being open to the fullness of life. Let us bring to the table our sorrow which seals us in hopelessness. Let us bring to the table our fears which prevent us from seeing clearly and living boldly. Grant us the courage to leave our burdens at your table and walk from the heavily laden table into the fullness of life. As Christ transformed death into life, so might we be transformed as we take our holy meal and feast with thanksgiving in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. I believe you already have your own faith. So my dear brothers and sisters, hear the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ as they are delivered by the Apostle Paul. I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, blessed, and break it and gave to his disciples saying this is my body which was broken for you do this in remembrance of me in the same manner he poured the wine into the cup and after his sap said this is the cup of the new covenant this is the cup in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. As the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night he was betrayed, took bread, 
I take these elements of bread and wine to be set apart from all common use to this holy use and mystery. And as he gave thanks and blessed, let us draw near to God and again present to him our prayers and thanksgiving. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that this bread and this cup may be for us the body and blood of our Lord and that we and all who share this feast may be one with Christ and He with us. Fill us with eternal life that with joy we may be His faithful people until we feast with Him in glory. This our prayer we make in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, take and eat. This is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken for us. All of you, take and eat. Take and drink. This is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. All of you, take and drink. Let us again pray. Thank you, merciful God, for the bounty of your creation, for the gifts of the field and, the, and vine that nourish our bodies, souls, and hearts. Sustained by this meal and the assurance of your grace to our Lord Jesus Christ, may our lives reflect your presence and may you be our priority. Amen. Let us now profess our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
And now, my dear brothers and sisters, as the Father has loved you, go now and love. As the Son has forgiven and redeemed you, go now, extending grace to all you meet. As the Spirit has transformed you into the likeness of the Son, go now, letting the life of Christ guide you each moment of the day. Go now, in love, with grace, and in the light of Jesus, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.